ripping in the D series right now. And I just got the message on eBay that my intake has been delivered at the house. $10 life right there. I'm hoping I get home before I lose daylight right now. You gotta be kidding me, guys. Look at this. This is what's gonna screw me right here. Oh, man. We're pulling in, guys. Is it in the front or is it in the back? See it. See it from the distance. It's right there. The box is right there. Midnight looking clean. About to get a new part. I am stoked right now, guys. And like I said, I'm gonna get a lot of hate but I don't care because I did a ton of research on this intake. It's time to reveal the intake. Coming up the stairs. Engine intake right here, guys. Look at this. And it is officially snowing and people are stuck. Look at that. People are stuck. People have no idea what's going on. And I'm literally the only one out here with snow tires. Look at this guy, stuck. You guys can see that we have our first snowfall right here. And surprisingly, it's not that cold out. The first thing I have to do is I need to clean the SI off really quickly. Um, get all the snow off of that. So today is the day that we could say goodbye to the stock intake. As far as headers and intakes go, this is the last intake that I'm buying. I'm not switching around intakes anymore. I had the K&N before this and exhausts. I think I should be banned from exhaust. What do you guys think? Well, yeah, let's get wrench in here. We got to remove this stock intake system first. And just so you guys know, I am taking my thermal gasket off and I'm going to tell you why. I installed the thermal gasket, you know, expecting obviously cool intake air temperatures, which it did beyond phenomenal with like Temps were only like 10 degrees hotter than the outside temperature. After doing some research on a few forums, I read that the thermal gaskets actually aren't precisely cut so they match up with the intake ports. So there might be some overhang of the gasket in each individual port. Coming over here, it's very hard to see, but I'm lining the old manifold gasket up exactly with the thermal gasket and you can see like right here there is slight overhang right there which is can affect airflow and the next one there's slight overhang right there and i am still learning with this thing the k series is a lot different than the single overhead cams so you guys could pretty much say whatever you want but personally me that was a rookie mistake on my part but that's the part of having a project car is to pretty much try and either succeed or there's an error and you go back and you do it again and then you get different results and you try to figure out what the best setup is right so i have my new honda intake manifold gasket go to autozone real quick with the d17 to pick up some brake cleaner i'm going to clean the whole mating surface down again all right so let's hop in the d series gonna go to Dunkin Donuts but look at that line right there into AutoZone right now look at that rice there all in pieces all the time all right guys the thermal gasket is officially off so I'm gonna run inside grab the new intake and I know 
it's another short ram and i'm gonna get oh you got you had this intake before you had something similar to this so a little bit on why i went with the engine i wanted something that's easy to install i wanted something that sounds amazing the vtech crossover with this the price is very very reasonable guys i brought this actually down the guy wanted 250 for it wanted the seller on ebay and i got it for like 220 so i threw him the best offer and he accepted super fast delivery time and as the box states it is literally the world's first tuned intake system recommended by like I don't know, at least six or seven of you guys to pick up the in-gen short ram. And I will say a lot of you guys, you know, recommended cold air intakes. I'm not gonna lie, if I had to go cold air intake, it would be skunk two cold air because the, the gains that it puts down are absolutely incredible. Hybrid racing's good too. I like it because it has the bypass valve, but they're just kind of pricey, harder to install. I didn't know how I feel about relocating my battery. What the fuck? Another reason why I went in-gen as well is because you can flip this intake around to the front and make it like a Ram Air intake. And a lot of you I told I was going to go K-tuned Ram Air 3.5 inch, but honestly not a lot of people ran them. I wasn't sure on how the power would be, the sound would be, because sound is really important to me as well, just as power, but I don't know. I didn't know how I felt about it. I mean, I feel like it's a newer intake. I don't know if it's more you know refined and like tested as much as the engine is so that's why i went engine over that why are you bothering my productions can you stop god christmas came early guys didn't it we got the air filter right here and all the piping we got one of the first bends that goes into the throttle body we got a coolant bypass hose and last but not least the engine piping so some tools you're gonna need guys you're gonna need a screwdriver flathead and phillips head some pliers to get the hose clamps off a ratchet with some sockets start by taking the negative terminal of the battery off Terminal is a 10 millimeter all right so we're gonna start by taking the box off three bolts slash studs that are holding the intake box on which is there's one back there there's one right here, 10 millimeters, and then there's one right here in the back. You gotta undo all these clamps, these metal clamps that are holding the box on. You're gonna have like six, I believe. Gonna unplug the mass airflow sensor, which sits right on the top here. Just tuck it off to the side right now make sure it doesn't get dirty since we have to transfer the mass airflow sensor over to the other pipe i'm gonna go ahead and remove this one right now and all it is is two little phillips heads gently just pry this up and that's your mass airflow sensor one tool that's going to help you guys out too is like a carbon scraper and this carbon scraper is going to help you remove pretty much the hoses away from their connection point so i'm just going to pry this like so gently all right the box is off So we're gonna save this for the end, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove this hose right here that connects right into the throttle body. You're gonna have a clamp you need to get loose, and then you're gonna have two hoses that run into this, which are right here. All right, this piece is off. Came off pretty easy, guys. in this thing up right now this thing is huge i hope this is like this sits on the throttle body good because there seems like there's a space maybe once i put the clamp on it's so i just put on the mass airflow sensor to the engine piping just get this bypass off here that clamp's undone and then we have one right here undoing that one right now Got this end off, now I'm gonna go ahead and pull up on this end. All right, 
This is the old one. I'm gonna reuse these clamps, obviously. All right, now we can connect the engine hose onto the location here. Should slip right on. Just tightening up the little clamps, guys. The engine hose that they provided me is officially on. Guys, short ram or not, this thing looks absolutely sick, man. I don't even care what anybody says. There's a little, like, support thing right here you want to put into this back piece. All right, guys, so I unfortunately have to take off this header wrap as well as this tape right here because this is getting in the way of this rubber piece right here. And this thing is a pretty tight fit. I'm not going to lie, I feel like it's because the throttle body, uh, the throttle body spacer. Make sure you have your two clamps on there, and then, obviously, you want to have your filter on, your mass airflow sensor on, and with the throttle body spacer, guys, it's a tight fit. Like, it's almost hitting my brake master cylinder back there, but just be patient with it, and slowly just work it onto the coupler. Just like so. I have to trim this hose. I'm probably gonna trim it to about right here. Put a little clamp on it. Reconnect my mass airflow sensor there. Reconnect this bottom hose right here. And tighten up all the clamps. And make sure everything's good. So I am losing daylight, guys. So I'm about to just cut the video right here. I definitely wanted to show you guys some more, like some poles, but I need to get this thing done. Hopefully I don't have any leaks because there is a slight little gap. So I'm gonna run this, see if it works. If not, I'll just have to get a different size hose, but I'm not really worried about it. I'm just rechecking everything for like leaks or any like things that I didn't plug in. 